For over a century, the Titanic's inner chambers remained sealed and untouched, until now. An underwater drone, braving pitch darkness and bone-crushing pressure nearly 12,500 feet down, has crossed the threshold no human ever has. No human. Inside, it finds eerily preserved belongings, a sealed journal, and something hidden the world never expected. What the drone saw is about to rewrite our understanding and raise profound questions that science alone cannot answer. 12,500 feet below the North Atlantic, the Titanic rests in a world that was never meant for human eyes. The darkness here is total. No sunlight reaches this far. Temperatures hover just above freezing, and the pressure is staggering, more than 6,000 pounds per square inch, enough to crush steel and bone without pause. In these conditions, even the hardiest submersibles once dared only brief, cautious visits to the ship's broken exterior. For decades, the Titanic's interior remained out of reach, sealed not just by rusted steel, but by the sheer hostility of the deep. That barrier has only now been crossed. The breakthrough came not from brute force, but from a leap in engineering. Pressure-proof robotics, built from titanium alloys and synthetic sapphire, are now able to resist the crushing weight of the abyss. These machines are guided by operators who rely on real-time sonar, AI-assisted navigation, and a fiber-optic tether that carries power and commands down through two and a half miles of black water. Inside the wreck, the drone moves with surgeon-like precision, avoiding twisted beams and silt-choked passageways that could trap or destroy lesser machines. Every movement is a gamble against the unknown. One wrong nudge could unleash a blizzard of silt or trigger a collapse in the decaying structure. Yet, for the first time, the technology exists to enter these haunted corridors, to see what the ocean has kept hidden for more than a century. What waits inside is not just history preserved, but a direct connection to the lives abruptly ended here, and to questions that have lingered in the dark since 1912. The drone's lights sweep along a corridor barely wider than its titanium frame, revealing the first traces of lives interrupted mid-journey. A wooden deck chair, its slats warped but still upright, sits against a wall as if waiting for a passenger who never returned. Nearby, a single leather shoe rests on the silt, its laces tangled, the leather dulled but intact after more than a century in cold, oxygen-poor water. Beside it, a porcelain doll gazes upward, its painted eyes unblinking, its dress undisturbed. These objects are not grand relics or treasures, they are fragments of daily life, left behind in a rush, now preserved in the deep. The silence here is total, broken only by the faint hum of the drone's thrusters. Every artifact seems frozen in the instant the ship was lost, untouched by human hand since 1912. The corridor's close walls press in, amplifying the sense of confinement. Each object, chair, shoe, doll, offers a glimpse into the private worlds of those who sailed on Titanic. The drone moves slowly, almost reverently, past these intimate remains. In these tight quarters, the human scale of the disaster becomes inescapable. These small, personal echoes linger in the dark, hinting at the enormity of what lies beyond. Monumental Absence Where the ship's heart once beat with music and light, the drone finds only emptiness. The grand staircase, once crowned with stained glass and polished oak, is now a gaping void. Fragments of railings catch the beam, curves of brass and splinters of wood, all that remain of a place that defined the Titanic's promise of luxury. Silt drifts through the space like pale smoke. The silence is absolute, broken only by the faint mechanical pulse of the drone's thrusters. Preservation Pocket Yet, just beyond this devastation, the drone's sensors register something unexpected. A sealed pantry, its door jammed shut since the night of the sinking. Inside, the cold and lack of oxygen have created a pocket where time seems to have stalled. Stacks of porcelain plates sit in neat columns. Wine bottles, their corks still pressed tight, stand upright on the shelves. A silver serving tray glints beneath a film of sediment. The drone's onboard chemical sensors confirm what the cameras suggest. 
The microclimate in this compartment has slowed decay to a crawl. A rare archive. Mission scientist Dr. Lena Ortiz describes the scene in her log. It is as if the pantry was closed off from disaster. The preservation here is extraordinary. Organic material, even paper labels, still legible after more than a century underwater. This unlikely archive raises urgent questions. How many other pockets like this exist within the wreck? How long before shifting currents or structural collapse erase them forever? For now, the pantry remains a still life, sealed against the chaos outside, offering a rare glimpse of what the Titanic once was and what the ocean still holds in trust. The machine at the heart of this mission is no ordinary robot. Its frame is forged from titanium alloy engineered to withstand the relentless pressure more than two miles beneath the surface. Twelve thrusters, each the size of a soda can, allow for precise movement in any direction. The sapphire lens port at its nose is harder than glass and immune to corrosive salt water, protecting a suite of high-definition cameras and laser scanners. Every command, every pixel of video travels up a fiber-optic tether that stretches from the drone through the wreck and all the way to a control room aboard the support vessel, hundreds of meters above. The pilot, an ocean engineer with years of deep-sea experience, sits surrounded by monitors and control sticks. On this dive, she guides the remotely operated vehicle through a narrow passage lined with debris. The drone's artificial intelligence co-pilot runs in parallel, using real-time sonar to map obstacles and suggest safe paths. But the human touch is still essential. As the drone edges forward, a sudden pulse of silt erupts from beneath a collapsed beam. Visibility drops to zero in less than a second. Telemetry shows a spike in tether tension and the screens turn to a swirling gray haze. For several minutes, the pilot relies on sonar alone, feathering the thrusters in microbursts, inching the machine backward through the blizzard. On the surface, engineers stand by to sever the tether if the drone becomes trapped, a last resort that would mean abandoning the mission and a multi-million dollar vehicle. The pilot's training pays off. She keeps the drone steady, avoiding panicked movements that could worsen the whiteout. The artificial intelligence co-pilot identifies a clear retreat, and the drone emerges from the silt cloud with its cameras intact. In the logs, this incident is just another line among hundreds. But inside the wreck, the margin for error is razor thin. The technology is formidable, but it is the discipline and judgment of the pilot that keeps the mission and the story of the Titanic alive. On the surface, the team gathers around banks of monitors, watching as thousands of images begin to stream up from the deep. Every second, the drone's cameras capture overlapping frames, each one a fragment of the Titanic's hidden interior. These photographs are more than snapshots. Together, they form the raw material for a digital resurrection. Mission scientist Dr. Lena Ortiz explains that every corridor Every artifact, every shadowed corner, is photographed from multiple angles. The images are fed into powerful computers, which analyze how each feature appears from different perspectives. Through a process called photogrammetry, these overlapping images are translated into millions of data points, creating a dense point cloud that maps the ship's interior with centimeter-level precision. The workflow is painstaking. Software algorithms match up the tiniest details, chips in a plate, the curve of a chair leg, the grain of a wooden wall. As the computers stitch these together, the point cloud thickens into a virtual skeleton of the wreck. Textures are layered on top, drawn directly from the photographs, so that every surface in the model reflects the real appearance of the Titanic as it exists today. The result is a navigable, three-dimensional twin, accurate down to the smallest crack in the tile or the faded print on a wine bottle label. Researchers can now move through the digital wreck as if walking its halls, pausing to examine objects or measure distances that would be impossible to reach in person.
This digital twin is more than a map. It preserves a version of the Titanic that will outlast the wreck itself, capturing details that may soon be lost to collapse or corrosion. For the first time, scientists and descendants can revisit these spaces without risking further harm to the site. The virtual model becomes a tool for archaeology, for planning future dives, and for sharing discoveries with the world, ensuring that what the drone saw in the dark will remain accessible, even as the ship continues its slow descent into the silt. Inside the digital twin of Titanic, a new story begins to take shape. Not of a ship split neatly in two, but of metal torn by forces more violent and chaotic than anyone imagined. Naval architects pore over the model, tracing the jagged lines where steel gave way. The brakes spiral and twist, evidence of progressive failure rather than a single clean snap. Interior beams are wrenched sideways, deck plates folded like paper. The conventional wisdom, two tidy halves sinking in sequence, no longer holds. Instead, the evidence points to a breakup marked by torsion, with sections twisting apart as water rushed in, tearing the ship from within. Decay, too, is accelerating. Rusticles, delicate colonies of iron-eating bacteria, hang from every exposed surface, converting steel to fragile orange lace. The captain's bath, once a symbol of the ship's grandeur, has collapsed into a heap of porcelain and corroded pipes. Masts and upper decks show widening holes, their outlines changing with each survey. The model's timestamps reveal a shrinking window for preservation. What stands today may vanish in years, not decades. Yet among the patterns of destruction, the drone sensors reveal an anomaly that defies explanation. In the forward cargo hold, sonar maps a dense, irregular mass that appears nowhere on the original blueprints or the ship's manifest. The anomaly is large, too structured for mere silt, too amorphous for known machinery. Cross-referencing survivor accounts and archival documents yields no clues. The team debates, is it misplaced ballast, lost cargo, or something entirely undocumented? The discovery raises urgent questions about what remains hidden in Titanic's depths, and how much time is left to answer them before the ocean reclaims it all. A rectangular shadow at the edge of the drone's light caught the pilot's attention, a shape too regular to be debris wedged beneath a fallen cabinet. She eased the drone closer, careful not to stir the silt, and the cameras sharpened their focus. There, half buried in sediment, lay a leather-bound journal, its cover sealed shut by a century of cold and pressure. The stitching along the spine was still visible. For a moment, the only sound in the control room was the faint hum of electronics. The pilot's hands hovered above the controls, instinct urging her to reach out, training demanding restraint. Every protocol, every ethics briefing replayed in her mind. The journal might hold a survivor's words, a crewman's log, or nothing at all. But disturbing it could collapse the fragile cabinet or send a cloud of silt billowing through the passage, erasing details before they could be recorded. She halted the drone's movement. The mission log records her decision. Artifact detected. No contact. Imaging only. Awaiting consensus. The team conferred in quick, hushed voices, but the pilot's choice was clear. In that instant, the weight of the site's history pressed in. The journal remained untouched, a silent witness to disaster and restraint alike. The drone's cameras lingered, capturing every detail for the digital twin, while above, the pilot waited for the next instruction, knowing that sometimes the hardest action is to do nothing at all. Inside the control room, conservation specialists and archaeologists gather around the digital twin, tracing the drone's path and reviewing every angle of the newly discovered journal. The plan is measured, rehearsed, and deliberate. No artifact will be touched until its removal can be done with the least possible risk to the site and the object itself. Using the three-dimensional model, the team simulates every step of the retrieval, mapping out the safest approach for the drone and identifying potential hazards in the surrounding debris. Before any contact, non-invasive scans are prioritized. Spectroscopic sensors and high-resolution imaging assess the journal's condition, searching for signs of decay or microbial growth. Every detail, temperature, oxygen level, silt coverage, is recorded, 
building a complete profile of the artifact's microenvironment. If removal is approved, the team will use a cold, anoxic transfer protocol. The journal would be sealed in a sterile, chilled seawater container immediately upon recovery, preserving its fragile leather and paper against sudden chemical changes. Chain of custody procedures are drafted in advance, requiring documentation at every stage, from the moment the journal leaves the wreck to its arrival in a climate-controlled conservation lab. Every action is logged, witnessed, and photographed. The process is slow, methodical, and shaped by the understanding that the Titanic is not just a site of discovery, but a place that demands respect. Lead scientist Dr. Lena Ortiz describes the approach as science in service of memory, never at its expense. Public reaction has been immediate and divided. For many, the first images from inside Titanic's sealed compartments inspire a sense of RWE. Messages flood social media, describing the footage as both beautiful and heartbreaking. The digital twin, with its precise detail and haunting accuracy, draws millions to virtual tours and educational forums. Yet beneath the fascination, a current of unease runs strong. Critics question whether this level of access crosses a line, turning a maritime grave into a spectacle. One descendant of a third-class passenger warns, we are not just looking at artifacts, we are looking into the private spaces of people who never came home. Surveys reflect this split. While most people support digital preservation and non-invasive study, a significant minority say they are uncomfortable with probing further or recovering personal effects. Letters to heritage groups urge restraint, citing the site's status as a memorial. Calls for clear boundaries grow louder, especially after the discovery of the leather-bound journal. The debate is not just academic, it is personal, shaped by the voices of those whose ancestors rest on the ocean floor. As one ethics advisor, herself descended from a Titanic victim, says, We could, but we chose not to. Memorial comes first. The question lingers. How much knowledge is worth the cost of disturbing the peace of the lost? At a depth of 12,500 feet and under pressures exceeding 6,000 pounds per square inch, the underwater drone captured the Titanic's interior in unprecedented detail, revealing intact deck chairs, leather shoes, and a sealed leather-bound journal untouched for over a century. Thousands of images were combined to create the first centimeter accurate 3D model of the ship's interior. Forensic analysis showed the breakup was far more chaotic than previously believed, while the discovery of an unidentified mass in a cargo hold and the contents of the sealed journal remain unresolved. The cold, low-oxygen environment preserved artifacts, but accelerated decay now threatens their survival. Today, the digital twin informs targeted, minimally invasive archaeology and shapes debates over recovery, ethics, and international law. The evidence compels a choice – retrieve history before it vanishes or let the Titanic remain undisturbed, a decision grounded in fact, science, and the collective memory of a maritime tragedy.